Hello everyone, it's Mark Sabatella from Mastering MuseScore here, and welcome to the MuseScore Cafe. So, uh, you may be noticing background looks different, my setup's a little different, hopefully everything's okay, but as I mentioned before, I am coming to you from Florida, and uh, this is my mobile setup, and hopefully things work out okay. Already some issues technically that I think uh, maybe are resolved, but I guess we shall find out. So, in any case, uh, welcome everyone. This is um, the uh, fourth week of the month, and uh, so I usually will have a particular topic to talk about, and I'm going to talk about copying things, just uh, how to copy and paste, but more than just copy and paste of simple things. We'll talk about all the different ways of selecting things, different things that can be copied, and uh, all sorts of things relating to the subject of copying things, because it is a subject that comes up often, and there's a lot of kind of different pieces to it, a lot of areas to possibly get confused about what is possible, what's not possible, what's possible, but only if you know the special tricks to do it, and so forth. So that's what I'm here to show you. So uh, let's uh, go ahead and we're going to kind of get started. Uh, I kind of have an idea of some things I want to um, do and you know if there's aspects of what I'm doing that you have questions about feel free to uh, ask about those. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to flip over to an empty score and I'm going to assume by the way that everything is okay uh, picture and sound wise and let me know if not, not, not that I can necessarily um, uh, solve problems that uh, are unique to my situation here, but it, it should be okay. So we're going to talk about the basic process of copying and pasting, and I'm going to describe it in really high-level terms, and then we're going to get more specific. So, you know, all computer programs pretty much have the idea of copying and pasting, right? So if I enter some notes into this score, my usual notes here, I can say select these first two measures, and I did that by clicking this measure. If you click an empty spot in a measure, it selects the entire measure, right? So if I want to select a single measure, I can select that, and then to copy, Control c or Command-C on Mac, that's always the uh, shortcut for copy across all operating systems, well, command versus control, but all systems, all programs use that same basic shortcut. And if for some reason you haven't gotten that one memorized yet, uh, you would go to the edit menu and find copy here. Copy is C, paste is, is V, and uh, cut is X. That's control C, control V, control X versus uh, command C, command V, and command X on uh, Mac. So if I've selected this measure and press control C, this copies it, meaning it puts it onto this special clipboard area. And I'm, I'm sure, um, uh, um, I'm sure that that's, uh, okay, I, I'm seeing the comment here from Bob. Let me, let me finish my sentence and then I'll come back to that. So, um, that idea when you press copy, it doesn't mean make a copy of it visible, right? It means it copies it to this sort of invisible clipboard, and then from there we're going to paste it. So let me go ahead and do that, and then I'll see if I can address the, the levels. So I think I've already copied it, but it's not going to hurt to do it again. That's a good thing to know about copy to the clipboard. It just replaces what's ever already on this clipboard. So just think of this clipboard as like this magic invisible thing um, that you're copying things onto. And now I can select another measure and say control V to paste. And it pastes to that area there, right? So um, my mic volume is turned all the way up, but if you're saying that it's less loud than usual, I'm gonna come over here and try to maybe just turn up the uh, level on the input here. Now the the fact that there's reverb, it's not like added reverb, it's that I'm in a, a room with like a hard floor and hard walls, so it's just the natural sound of the room. But in fact, you know, I could just turn this more up and then turn the level down on my mic, but I'm gonna go with this for now, and you all can tell me if that's, uh, if it's too loud, let me know. I'll turn it back. Okay, so 
Let's come back to my score here. So I, I gave you the basic mechanics of copy and paste. You copy something to your clipboard, you select somewhere you want to paste to, and then you paste it, right? Um, there's also cut, right? Cut, copy, and paste are three commands that always go together. If I select this measure and say copy, it is copied to my clipboard, but it remains where it is here. If I, instead of copy, do cut or control X, you'll see it deletes that measure, deletes the contents of the measure while copying it to your clipboard. So that if you come over here and say control V to paste, what's really happened is we've moved it from here to there. And that is something to be really aware of in MuseScore specifically. I mean, all programs pretty much have co copy and paste, but in MuseScore, you really want to get used to that cut and paste uh, model because this is how we move things. It's how we move almost any piece of music from one place in the score to another. If you've got a measure, if you've got like this note here, D, and you've decided uh, oh, you know what? I kind of messed up and I really meant this D to come in on beat three. And so everything from here until here is uh, a, a, a measure is a beat too late. Oh, let me show you how I just did that selection. I click one thing. I click the D. Shift click the C, right? That's how you create range selections in general. Click one thing shift click another there's other ways to do that also you can click the first note and then use shift right to kind of extend the selection one note or rest at a time and if i use control shift right it goes a whole measure at a time and these are exactly the same shortcuts that you normally see in text right if i'm editing text here and I press shift right, it will select one letter at a time. If I use control shift right, it selects a word at a time. And again, pretty much every single program in the world that edits text uses those exact same things. And uh, Joaquim is, is observing something that is very true, and I'll go ahead and show that in a second, but let me show what I really wanted to show first. If I've decided that all of this passage is a note too early, like this C maybe was supposed to be a half note and everything else is now a beat too early, I can select everything else, Control X to cut it, because I don't need it where it is anymore, and then select beat three and paste. And now everything is moved over by one beat. So if you want to move every, if you want to move some set of notes one beat later or one beat earlier, let's say over here, maybe I didn't want the D at all. Maybe I really wanted bum, bum. I wanted to go bum, 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 bum. I wanted not to have the D in there. Well, in that case, I can select from the E to the D, select the range of notes that I want to move, and then control X, and I'll select the beat I want to move them to, and control V. And so that moved them. So you can move things to a totally different part of the score. You can move them to another staff. I can come down to this other staff here and paste those same notes there. Of course, they look ridiculous because they're high notes. They're too high for the bass clef, but now I can move them down an octave or two. I can also move to another score entirely. I can go to my MuseScore Cafe theme music and uh, paste them in here. So I can come to my, uh, let's see if I find an empty measure that's useful, like right here in the trumpet part, control V, and now those notes are pasted in here. So you can totally paste between scores very easily. Now, Joaquin was talking about um, uh, the idea of uh, swapping to adjacent notes. And yeah, this is sort of a specialty command that we implemented at some point, and it's not very well known. And to be honest, it's, it's quite limited in what it can do. But if I didn't want, like, let me just undo all those last, and I'm just undoing, 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 undo, undo. All right. Let's say that I really didn't want uh, this whole passage from Dion moved to the right. I really just wanted that D to be on beat three, but E to be on beat two. I wanted to swap those two uh, um, notes. Well, what I can do is go into note input mode here, and while you're in note input mode, shift right will swap the selected note with a note to the right. So 
Right now you can see it's D followed by E. If I press shift right, now it's E followed by D. So that allows you to swap two notes. Now when I say it's pretty limited, it is in that, let's make this C a half note now. Now that that C is a half note, I just pressed 5 to turn it into a half note. Now if I go into note input mode by pressing N and press shift right, uh-uh, ain't going to happen. You can also go to the D and try to press shift left, because that also works normally, shift left. This swapping thing will only work if, you, uh, if the two notes have the same duration. Uh, yeah, it, it, to, okay, so little known fact, um, it used to work uh, if, even if the notes didn't have the same duration, but it would corrupt your score every single time. So, so rather than figure out how to fix that command to not corrupt your score, uh, several years ago someone just disabled that command, I think it was me, um, just disabled the command entirely so to avoid corrupting your score in those cases. And so here's another thing, uh, you know, we're all, I'm always up for just uh, talking about the things that come up. If there's a command that you find yourself doing by accident and um, it's kind of annoying you and you, because you're, you're hitting that shortcut when you don't mean to, maybe you're thinking you're selecting or maybe you're, you just bump into the shift. If you think you're not going to need that command, we can disable it. We can go to edit, preferences. And then under shortcuts, I'm going to, I think it's called, is it called swap? No, it's called exchange. No. Um, oh, here's what I can do. Here's a nice trick. If I'm looking for a command and I can't remember what the command is called, I can just pick some short, some command that doesn't have a shortcut. And then uh, one that's actually works in node input mode. I don't know if it, which of these commands are designed to work in node input mode, but I'll just pick this double flat command and I'll say define and I'll try shift right. Uh, it lets me because it's they're they're in different modes. MuseScore tries to be clever to allow you to use the same shortcut to mean different things in different modes. And so unfortunately it wasn't able to tell me what the uh, um, what the overlapping command was there, but um, yeah, I am still a little curious here. See if I can find it. It's in here somewhere, and if you all find it and let me know, you could uh, you could help me out. Move, no, no, that's something different. But one of these commands, anyhow, is uh, those commands to swap notes. And if you can find the command in the list, uh, then you would be able to redefine it to either be nothing or to maybe require alt or something also, so you're less likely to, oh, here we go. Add to selection, no, oh, okay, so the th the, that is the thing, it, it actually is using the same command uh, that is used for selection. It's just reusing the same command to mean swap when you're in node input mode. That, so probably if you redefine one of them, it's gonna redefine them both. All right. So I've showed you the basics of copy and paste, and really that's, that's you know, most of you have probably seen most of that before, um, but there's more to it than this. So that's why I want to focus on here, some of the additional things you can do. So one of them is, and you might, you've probably seen me do this a bunch, and I sometimes talk about it and sometimes don't. Let me go back to my original version of this. I had do 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 and sometimes I just want to fill up a score with that pattern repeating. Now is that something you would do in real life, want to fill up a whole score with a repeating pattern? Well frankly yes, maybe. If you look at my MuseScore Cafe, uh, you know, there's this guitar pattern that just sort of repeats. Mm, da -da, dum, da -da, dum. Like this pattern kind of repeats throughout the score. This drum beat repeats throughout the score. We actually looked at that whenever it was last week. So if you have a particular pattern that you want to repeat throughout the score, you can select it. So I'm clicking this measure, shift clicking this measure, and then the magic command is R. When I press R, it just makes a copy of it. It's like a shortcut for copy, then select the thing right after the existing selection, then paste. So it's a shortcut for make a copy of this thing right after itself, which is a common enough thing to need to do. And then I can just press R a whole bunch of times and or just even hold R key down and it will fill up my score with copies of that passage.
So that's something that's, you know, occasionally useful. All right. Um, so that's kind of the basics of copying things. Uh, I also want to show there's certain things about copying individual notes that you might want to know. So I'm going to change this to a half note here to make my point here. I'm going to select just that note. I'm not going to do the whole thing where there's a blue rectangle around it, right? When I selected this measure, this is what's called a range selection, and it has the blue rectangle. If I select a single note, there's no rectangle. If I want the rectangle, one way to do that is, let me press escape to make sure nothing is selected, I can just shift click the note. And now it creates the rectangle. With the rectangle there, this means it's a range selection. If I now copy it and then come over here and paste, you'll see that it pasted that exact thing. A half note G. When you select a range and copy it, even if the range only consists of one note, it will copy everything about that selection basically as far as the notes go. It'll copy the duration and the pitches. However, if I just select the G itself with no rectangle around it and then say copy and then come over here to the next note and say control V, Ah, I guess that changed in MuseScore 4. I think we got enough complaints about that in MuseScore 3. In MuseScore 3, if I had done that, I would have ended up with a G quarter note. And someone at some point thought that was a good idea, but lots of other people thought it wasn't a good idea. And it looks like at MuseScore 4, the people who thought it wasn't a good idea won. So in fact, it looks like you can uh, copy and paste an individual note if you want. Or it could be a whole chord, right? It could be a G and a B, um, and if I now select that whole range. Oh, to select that range, I used another trick. I clicked, and then I pressed Shift right to extend the selection a little larger, and then Shift left to shrink it. I do that combination a lot. I said you can also just Shift click something, but usually I'm t I, I've forgotten. By the time I select something, I'm like, oh, I meant a range selection. And then I'll just go shift right, shift left. And I just hold the shift down and go and I can like turn, you know, a single note selection into a range selection this quick. You ready? Ta -da. Oh, I did it too fast because I'm being silly. Oh, that's because I hit the wrong button. Actually, I hit I hit uh, the down button so that now I'm going to go right left and faster than you can even tell, I uh, made turn that click into a range selection. So um, I want to switch now from talking about range selections, range selections, to talking about single element selections. I'm also going to pop over to the other window here and just uh, make sure I don't see anything funny going on, because like I mentioned, what was happening was the Circle website was glitching earlier this morning. I had no problems at my end, but Circle on their end had was tossing up timeout errors and things. But I think they've fixed it. But someone might want to confirm for me that I'm, that I'm still on. Uh, looks like I am, so if nothing else, there will be a recording. So I want to talk now about list selections. List selections are what happens if I select individual notes like with control click. Like I can select just this C and that E and this D. And I'm doing that by control clicking them. When you do that, you have what's called a list selection. And these list selections can be discontiguous like this one is. And uh, a list selection is useful for a lot of things. Um, uh, the um, a uh, list selection could be useful, like if I want to delete those notes, I can just press backspace and now they all turn into rests, or I can undo that, or I can press V to make them invisible, right? Um, so list selections are useful for a lot of things, but what they are not useful for, at least lists of notes, is copy and paste. You can't copy and paste scattered combinations of notes like this. It just won't work because MuseScore will I, in theory, it would be possible. In theory, it would be possible to calculate exactly. Oh yes, you want to copy that E two beats after the C and skip over what was already there in the in the destination. In theory, it might be possible to design that. In reality, there's just not really much use for it. And yes, wrong notes, happy accidents, stolen from Bob Ross. Um, 
So uh, the reason I'm mentioning list selections, even though we can't copy and paste list selections of notes, we can of other things. So I'm going to uh, right now press uh, Shift V to add, not V, V makes invisible, Shift V adds accent marks. Or if you don't want to remember that, you can click the accent uh, button on the toolbar here or go find it in the palettes. So I now have accent marks over those notes. I can now make a list selection of those accent marks. I can click the first one, control click the second one, control click the third one. And now I have those three accent marks and nothing else selected. I can now say control C to copy and then come over to the next measure, select that first note and use control V and you'll see it copied those accent marks in the same metric position, right? The first accent mark was on beat one, the second one was on beat three, the next one was on beat four of the next measure. When I pasted it, that's exactly what I got. I got uh, the first accent mark on beat one, the next one on beat three, the next one on beat four of the next measure. So this idea that you can copy markings as a grouping is quite useful. Now the fact that I went and control clicked them individually, that's maybe a little bit uh, awkward if you got a whole lot of them to click. And so there's a nice, relatively new, it's not new with MuseScore 4, I remember adding this feature and it might have been 3.4, so it's at least two or three years old, but not older than that. Um, I can click this accent mark, then shift click that accent mark. And notice what it did, can you tell? They all highlighted. Let me uh, do that again. See, they're not highlighted, they're black. I'm now clicking this one and I will scroll over and shift click this one and see they all turn to blue. They're all selected now. So just like click then shift click allows you to select a range of notes. If you do that with accent marks or really just about anything else, it will select everything of that type in that range. So for instance, I can use that for chord symbols. If I've got a C chord here, and then in the next measure, control right, G7, and I want to have this pattern and repeat of C, G7. I can select uh, those two chord symbols and then copy, and then come over the next measure and paste. So, and it pastes again the C directly over the note and the G7 four beats later, because that's where it was in the original. So copy and paste isn't just for entire ranges. You can copy just chord symbols, and that could be useful because, you know, maybe the melody wasn't the same thing. Maybe the melody was going to be E, F, G, A, B, A, G, F, something like this. But maybe I want that same thing, the C chord here, the G7 here. So I can do it by clicking the C and Control V. And the C chord shows up over the E, the G7 over the B, right? So that's how you can uh, copy and paste uh, groups of kind of related markings. Now, the converse of that is that maybe you want to select, you want to copy the notes, but not the chords, because maybe you're going to, like, maybe you're going to use the same melody twice in uh, a given piece, but with different chord symbols one time versus the next. So what I can do, let me... Um, let me just delete from here. Oh, so here I've clicked this measure and I'm going to use Control Shift End to select to the end of the score. That's a useful thing to know. Clicking, and so like if you wanted to copy this entire passage, I could click the first measure and then Control Shift End will select everything on that staff to the end of the score. If your keyboard doesn't have a physical end key, like most Mac <laughs> keyboards don't, and most Chromebook keyboards don't. Some Windows keyboards do, no, most do, a few don't. A few Mac keyboards do have physical end keys. Apparently some extra fancy older ones do. In any case, if you don't have a physical end key, it's usually FN plus right. So anytime you hear me talk about uh, the home or end keys, that's FN left and FN right. And then you might also hear me or other people who are accustomed to things other than Mac talk about page up and page down keys. That's FN up and FN down. 
If I press Fn down, you notice it scrolled down. Fn up, Fn down. That's the page up and page down commands. They scroll. So, <coughs> um, anyhow, what I was going to do was try to copy this passage here. I'm going to copy this passage, but without the chords. So let me come to this spot in the piece, click it, Control Shift End, and Delete. So I got some empty bars here. And what I want to do now is I want to fill those bars with these notes, but not those chords. So what I can do is go to View Selection Filter. And in View Selection Filter, I can now uncheck chord symbols, if they're in here. There they are, chord symbols. By unchecking chord symbols, that means chord symbols are not selected. If I zoom in, well, if I go and select this range here, you'll see that the chord symbols are not blue. They are not, in fact, selected. So now if I copy and then come down here and paste, I'm going to get the notes without the chord symbols. And that is because I excluded them from the selection using this selection filter, which again I found by view selection filter. Almost everything I've showed you today works exactly the same in MuseScore 3 as well as MuseScore 4. Um, almost everything worked exactly the same between the two other than that one thing I showed you where if you copy a single note that's not a range, MuseScore 3 did it in a way that some people like but most people didn't. Um, MuseScore 4 now does it in a way that I think most people will like and a few won't. And, you know, so I think more people are going to like the MuseScore 4 way because we did definitely get complaints about that. Um, so that's something uh, that you can copy you know, aspects, you can copy a range but leave out the chord symbols or leave out the lyrics or leave out the articulations so that then you can add new chord symbols, new lyrics, new articulations, and so on. So um, let me flip back over to where I wrote up my brief description of what I said I was going to talk about because I've actually talked about most of the things that I said I was going to talk about. Um, and yeah, Colleen, I actually have the whole thing with the, the cable modem router thing being replaced also. That's coming up for us too, I believe. Um, so, uh, uh, making selections, I've talked about that, copying a full measure. I haven't done individual voices. I'll do that in a moment. I just showed how to copy a whole part. I showed how to do elements of a given type, and I'm going to show other ways of doing that also and all elements except those of a given type, which I just did via the filter. What if I want to just copy all chord symbols? What I can do is right click one of them and then go to the select menu and you'll see select similar. And now all the chord symbols are selected. So if you want them, literally all of them, that's probably faster than clicking one and then finding the last one to shift click it. You can just right click any of them and say, Right click, select, whoops, I didn't get the chord symbol, let me try that again. Right click, select, similar. So that will do that. But there's also a number of other options, like if you, if you go to where it says more, you'll see other options like uh, same staff, same voice, same system, all sorts of other fancy ways of building selections that are occasionally useful. And in the Mastering Music Score 4 course, there's a whole lesson or two lessons actually on making selections and that can be useful for. So I'm going to flip back over to my thing here and see if I can see the image that you're trying to post here, Joaquin. Ooh, it's just a gray and a blue uh, rectangles, so either it didn't come through or I'm not getting the point. So you'll have to tell me which. Um, but uh, in any case, I'm not quite sure what that image is trying to show me. But all I see is a gray rectangle and a blue rectangle. So uh, what I want to do uh, is talk about that idea of copying voices. So, you know, multiple voices are a thing. And I'm going to just select everything here with Control A and then hit Backspace to delete it all. And now I'm going to enter multiple voices. So I'm going to enter in voice one, a little bit of Mary had a little lamb.
And now I'm going to come back to that first measure, go back to node input mode, switch to voice 2, and enter uh, what I want there. This reminds me of, um, I think when I was doing a Beatles Harmony uh, um, a lesson that I used this, so I meant six. All right, so I now have uh, something in two voices. So, oh, press that click? Oh, okay, well, I'll try it. Um, let's see, oh, because you made it a link. I need to, uh, what the heck? So, yeah, let me close this. Click this. Ah, I see now. Move chord left. Oh, cool. And it's got shift showing that way. So move chord rest left. Oh, that's great that you found that. So why didn't I find it? I just didn't look hard enough. Oh, because I searched for note. And the shortcut isn't about note, it's chord. That's why I didn't see it. I almost put in rest instead of note, thinking that was going to be a little, um, there would be fewer commands having to do with rest and it would be a shorter list. So that's what I should have done. I should have searched my list for rest. So there you go. Those are when you were hunting for shortcuts um, in that edit, short, edit preferences shortcuts. Actually, let me just do that now. Thank you for showing me that. So if I go to edit, on. Edit references shortcuts, and now I'm going to type move into here. I will probably find those commands move chord. So it's these two here move chord or rest left move chord or rest right. So those are the two commands that if, and you can either redefine them to something else so you can still possibly use them, or you could just clear them. If you clear them, then uh, then you don't have to worry about them at all. And frankly, I, I, I never find them useful. I, I've probably only used those commands once in my life or twice in my life other than to demonstrate them. So um, I would probably be fine without those commands existing. All right, so I want to show how to copy a single voice only. So it's going to be a similar process of using this selection filter. I can exclude either voice one or voice two from the selection. So if I only want to copy voice one, I'm going to exclude voice two from the selection. And now I can make my selection, click, shift, click. And notice voice one is selected. You can see it's highlighted in blue. Voice two is still black. So it's um, not selected. So now that that's the case, I can do control C to copy. Now I can come to this next measure and do control V to paste. And you see, I only got voice one because I excluded voice two from the selection. You have to do that before you do the copy operation. So I'll, I'll, and then always remember to turn your voices back on or you won't be able to select voice two anymore. Now, one little quirk that I, th I don't remember if it's fixed in 4.1 is if I select this first, you can see like I've got voice one and voice two both checked here and everything's all nice and highlighted. If I uncheck voice two here, it doesn't immediately update the, the, the view here of what's selected. So you might want to press escape and then reselect it. And now you can see voice two is excluded. So that's like, um, a little a little small bug there in how that works that so make sure you set up your filter before making the selection if you want it to really work the way you uh the way you would want it to work so let me come back and bring the check back so good job finding that though joaquin i'm glad you found that the um one of the things that i think is coming by the way for musecore 4.1 and musecore okay so let me let me talk just take a little detour because I'm, you know, I've showed most of the stuff that I want to talk about with copy and paste anyhow. Um, uh, one of the things that will be coming in MuseScore 4.1 is um, some reorganization to the shortcuts uh, to hopefully make them easier to find by organizing them into categories. Um, uh, 
So um, that will be easier to find commands like that in principle in 4.1. I don't think that has been actually merged yet, so I can't demo it. But what I do want to say is we're getting close. I think MuseScore 4.1 within the next few weeks, within the next two or three weeks, if they keep on the schedule they're saying they want to keep to, will be ready to be demoing. It'll be a beta you know, test version of MuseScore 4.1 sometime in June and then sometime in July is when they want to actually do the real release. So um, so yeah, we'll be looking more at some new 4.1 stuff. There's not tons of new stuff, but there's definitely some good new stuff as well as the, the return of some things that were mix, missing. And Marla, there is a, there is a new harp uh, palette coming that has like a built-in tool for creating uh, um, pedal diagrams, and then also it has all the all the necessary controls for adding hooks to lines and things, and you can set up the line the way you want and add that to your harp palette also. So I think for harp specifically, 4.1 is going to have a bunch of things that'll be nice. So Bob, your question is, was it only the display that is off, or is it the selection itself? I think it's the selection itself. I think it is. But I'm not positive, so we're going to find out. And so we're all going to get to see what Bob is asking. Very astute question. So what I'm going to do is select this measure here. I'll select two measures because why not? That's a whole little phrase there. I've selected these two measures, and you can see everything is nice and colored to show it's highlighted. I'm now going to exclude voice two. And these notes are still highlighted. The question is, is it just the highlighting that's wrong, or is the selection itself wrong? Um, in other words, is voice two actually removed from that selection or not? I think it's not. I think I think the screen is is telling the truth. It's telling me that these voice two notes are still selected, even though I've unchecked that. But we're about to find out. I'm going to control C to copy. And now I'll find myself a nice empty area in the score and paste. Ah, OK. So it's only the display that's off. That's what we just learned. So that's a, I'm glad you asked that because all this time I've been thinking that the actual behavior was off, but I wasn't positive because I didn't really sit down and do the test. I had just noticed that little glitch at some point and then stopped thinking about it. So thank you for asking about that. Yeah, so it looks like uh, even though voice two stayed highlighted, it, the, the thing really did work. It was just the on-screen display that was off. And now I will re-enable voice two so I can make normal selections again. Okay, so um, there's always other aspects of making copies of things that are, uh, you know, could come up that you might want to do in certain cases. And I want to talk about some of these things uh, because some of them are, are possible and some of them are less possible. So for instance, in the uh, newsletter, I talked about pedal lines, and I'm going to show that so those of you who are watching this can see this demonstrated. If I go to the palettes, come on palettes, maybe I want to close that selection filter first and click that dot 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 and say close. All right, in the palettes, I'm going to open the keyboard palette, and I'm going to add this pedal line here. The one with the little the, the bracket on either end. Um, and then I'm going to click this thing and use shift right to extend it one note, which is the proper way to do these pedal markings. These these brackets always should point to beat one of every measure or not necessarily beat one of every measure, but the beat where you want the chord change to happen. And I don't know that changing chord every measure is really what we want most of the time, but you know, wh whatever the pattern is, often it's a repeating pattern. I can now click this pedal marking and then control C and now select that rest, control V, select this rest, control V, select this rest, control V, select this rest, control, whoops, I, yeah, control V. Um, so this idea that we can copy and paste a single pedal marking and it will remember its length, its duration like that. This is great. This is a new thing in MuseScore 4, because in MuseScore 3, the process of doing this <clears throat> was 
was much more cumbersome. So it could get better still. It would be nice not to have to just click the thing and nice to somehow be able to select a whole range and say, hey, do this every four beats or every whatever. But in real music, I know a lot of people who aren't pianists imagine that it's going to be common to want to change pedal every measure. In practice, that's usually not often enough because usually there's harmonic changes within a measure that make you want to change pedal more than once a measure. Now, you know, some pieces might literally be once a measure, but it's usually a bit more subtle than that. So I'm, I'm secretly happy it's not too easy to create uh, awkward pedal markings like ones that are just every measure. I'd rather people think about it a little bit, but you know, that's, that's me being me, I guess. So uh, this idea that I was able to copy uh, pedal markings and paste them, this is, a, again, a new thing. But there's a couple other interesting things you might want to know about that are related to copy and paste. And one of them, the internal word that we use in the, in the code is clone. Um, I don't know that there's any command or anything that, that there's an official term for this, but we refer to it as cloning something. And I'm going to show you what this is. If I right now uh, change to say base no I'm going to change to a different time signature I'll change to 3 4 and now let's say that over here I want to return to 4 4 and furthermore what if I wanted that 4 4 to be customized somehow I'm going to right click that 4 4 and then say time signature properties and I'm going to change it to uh, you know you can change the beaming or whatever um, I'm just going to change the text to say 8-8. Um, eight, eight. Not that you would ever do this, but I'm, there's method to my madness here. I just changed it on the top staff, but notice it didn't affect the bottom staff <clears throat> because properties affect only a single time signature. But I can do this clone thing to copy this to the bottom one and then also copy it somewhere else. So I'm going to, to do this clone thing, it's going to be control shift drag, which is the same way we would add to the palette. So if I, let me control shift, and then I'm going to drag. Notice that uh, the cursor is changed to a plus, and when I come down here, uh, when I release it, I now have an eight eight on the next staff also, and then I can also come over here and add it over there. And now I've added the 8-8 eight, eight to that step. Now I think that's because I dropped it on the rest that it only added to one step. I think if I select the whole measure, it will add to the whole measure. Let's see. Nope, it looks like the clone thing really is one step at a time. So I'd have to do this. But in any case, I get, as, I get this 8-8 eight, eight kind of copied. So there's things that don't copy by normal copy and paste that you can copy via this clone operation. And that can be useful for things like customized time signatures. Um, I don't know, and I'm about to find out, can I copy a repeat bar line that way? What do we think? I've never tried it before. Um, the fact that I've never tried it before sort of makes me think it's not going to work. But thinking about what I know about the code, I can't imagine why it won't. So I'm going to try it anyhow. I'm going to control shift drag this thing here and sure enough I got another repeat so things like bar lines or time signature changes or key signature changes that don't copy as part of a normal copy and paste operation you can clone them and so this is useful if you just want to make a single copy of something I want to then point out another thing though I'm gonna flip back over to my cafe theme music in my cafe theme music, notice there's a double bar after the uh, um, opening. There's uh, an, uh, a two bar repeat section there, right? And then there's a double bar here. There's, there's different things, and sometimes there might be tempo changes, there might be time signature changes. Copy and paste, like if I wanted to copy all of that 
to another place in the score, it's not going to get those double bars and everything. And that's been a com it's been one of the most commonly requested features, a way to copy music that will include things like double bars, tempo changes, time signature changes, key signature changes. It's been very commonly requested. I think everyone recognizes it's something that would be great to have. Uh, and I don't think it's all that complicated to actually implement. But to design exactly how it would work, it's probably going to relate to that selection filter thing somehow if it ever comes along. But in any case, just know if you've been trying to figure out how to copy and paste a passage that has time signature changes within it, the answer is you can't. You're going to have to set up those time signature changes in the new score. So I feel like, you know, I've talked about the things that I wanted to talk about. And I also know, you know, I'm, um, you know, I'm on vacation here and I, I, I typically find things to talk about for a full hour, but I might be done talking here. I might be done talking about things here and I might go just enjoy uh, the rest of my day here and maybe uh, set up an expectation that, you know, uh, Music Square Cafe is as long as it needs to be and it doesn't have to be a full hour. So, but I will open it up for questions if people have questions other things relating to this copy business here especially um, that I can answer real quick. I'll try to do that. Um, so uh, while I wait for the chat to catch up, let's uh, let you know uh, next week is the fifth week of the month. Not all months have a fifth week, but this one does. So it'll be another topic uh, session. I am considering doing more Ask Me Anything sessions. I feel like those go well and people enjoy them and um, uh, I might start doing more ask me anything sessions is kind of what I'm thinking uh, but but next week I'll come up with a topic to talk about so anyhow let's play some music oops every once in a while I forget that is the case in uh, music or four that if I select just a measure like that it's going to play just that staff so then I select I then press escape to unselect it. So there you go. So um, uh, thanks everyone for being here. And Bob, I do see your question in here. And the idea of a shortcut to invoke a macro is definitely something that comes up. There is a swap command that can swap ranges. Um, and uh, yeah, at some point I'll show that maybe when, maybe, yeah, at some point I'll, I'll be showing that also. But yeah, you're right, if you've got uh, a particular sequence of things and you want to do that over and over again, it's possible to write a plugin that will do that sort of thing. And someone did that. Someone once wrote a plugin that allows you to define a sequence of operations and then a find define a shortcut for that sequence of operations. I don't know if they have that plugin working in MuseScore 4 or not, but that's definitely a good question. And I will say, Bob, if you want to post that in the community to remind, no, I'm, I'm going to remember. As soon as it's done, I'm just going to go look that up and see. Because if I can, if I can get that plugin working in MuseScore 4, that would be cool to show, and maybe I'll show that next week if it works. <clears throat> And um, while this is playing out, Allison, if you've written something, you know, me, if you have audio and you want to get it in the Muse score, use your ears. <laughs> that, that, there's no, there's no magic bullet to turn audio into music notation. That's that's technology hasn't uh, come that far. So anyhow, I uh, hope you all uh, enjoy your week. Tomorrow I will be here for music masterclass. Don't have access to a piano here, but I'll be playing some recorder. We'll be doing some singing. We'll look at some of the music that people have created as part of the projects. So look forward to talking to people tomorrow for music masterclass. Bye now. Mm-hmm.